Welcome to the Papa Doo Podcast. Papa Doo! Ah, here we go. Welcome back, everybody, to the sixth episode of the Papa Doo Podcast. I popped a do as soon as we started. That was one of the few things I had on my list of today's podcast is to actually pop a Mountain Dew before we get to talking so I don't forget. I feel like it's very unprofessional for me to forget to pop the Dews for the Papa Doo Podcast. So there's the, the pop. I don't even know if Joey heard that or not. I did. I heard the pop. And ironically, you were talking while popping the the can, which is something they usually yell at me for. And uh, man, we're just off to an incredible start. <laughs> it's fine. Honestly, I just like to yell at you for no reason at all. So there's never been a reason why I made you not talk during a, the popping of the can because I could have muted you in the editing or you could have muted yourself in the editing. I just like yelling at you. So sorry about that, I guess. But um, no, I, I did this one a little different. I did this like I do my reaction videos where I like flipped it and caught it in a cool way and then turned it over and started talking and popped it. Uh, I don't know. Just tried something a little different today. Do you have a blooper reel at all of times that you've dropped it when you did that? I actually don't. Every single time I record those, it's the first time. I'm, I'm wow. really good at catching Mountain Dews for some reason. I don't know what it is. It's just like my hands gravitate towards the dew hey. and I can just snag it any way that I want to. You got to be good at something, right? <laughs> yeah, it just so happens to be <laughs> snagging out firing. Mountain Dews. Bow, bow, yeah. bow, 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 bow. Came out firing in this one. All right, hey, listen, I wasn't prepared for the jokes or to be made fun of today, <laughs> but uh, now you've got, me, you've got me on guard, so what's up with it? <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, I guess this episode is going to be a special episode of Papa Doo Podcast, pa, 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 we're going to talk to the people about how they can uh, get ahead or how they could get started or basically just answering people's questions about um, coming up on YouTube, coming up in music. And I think it's really interesting that it's going to be me and you talking about it because we both have uh, very different come ups and backstories. And the come up isn't over, by the way. We're not saying, oh, yeah, we're we're, not even fucking close. Neither one of us are satisfied. And that's like rule number one is don't be satisfied where you're at. But uh, yeah, Joey and I Mm -hmm. both have completely different come ups on how we both ended up where we are at. And uh, people ask, I know personally, they ask me, I get hundreds of DMs a day asking for advice on songs, asking for advice on how to grow their channel and stuff like that. So uh, Joey and I both thought this would be a very good topic for us to speak about because we both, I'm sure, have different interpretations and different things that work for us because there's no surefire method of you getting to where you need to go. Different things work for different people, and we're just going to tell you what worked for us and what didn't work for us because there was plenty of things that did not work. I don't know if that's the same for Joey, but I had a ton of things that did not work. Yeah, no, there was uh, that's basically... To come up in a nutshell, I think. At least for some, some people get lucky. Some people hit the ladder right off the bat. Some people are good enough right off the bat where their stuff just takes off. Because I'm going to preach till I'm in the dirt that you need to be really good and have stuff that people want to hear and see in order for you to succeed. But Yeah. That, uh, I feel like that is, an under, that is an underappreciated thing that people don't even think about. It's like, you have to be good. Like, not everybody, this isn't meant for everybody. I mean, obviously, you can work as hard as you fucking can to get good. Mm -hmm. But, like, you have to have something that people want to listen to, want to watch. Not everybody can do it. It, That's just the the hard fact of it. Yeah, or a lot of people think they're ready when they're not ready. And I think that's, like, Mm. 90% of artists. I was one of those people. I was definitely one of those people. There you go. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about before we get into this all, though, and all the questions are questions that you guys asked us, by the way, on the last YouTube video that we posted, which I believe was a uh, a clip of uh, you talking about the Poppin' Cypher and how it all came about, I think. I just made an investment, investing in yourself, that's important. Uh, I made an investment for a software called Omnisphere, producers antennas are going to go up once they hear me say that word because they know what it is <laughs> it's got like fourteen thousand different sounds or something like that and um it was like five hundred dollars to get it and uh i just got it the other day it took like a day to install but it's done and man there's so many sounds on there and i'm about to take my producer game to the next level i'm That's excited dope. is it something similar to splice with like a lot of different loops and plugins and stuff like that no it's not no but I haven't really used Splice, but from what I understand is you buy sounds, individual sounds that you really like yeah. on Splice or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think you pay for a membership and it has like a big library of things that you can do. So like I hear the same samples in a lot of different songs. It's because they use the sample from Splice. 
Mm, okay. They have high quality sounds and everything like that, mm-hmm. but this is yeah. like a a synthesizer basically. Oh. Uh, oh, okay, that makes just sense. Just a whole bunch of sounds. Like the choir the choir selection is insane. Oh, like I'd be that's shocked. That's good. If this is not what uh what's his name? Tommy Prophet uses. Oh yeah. To make NFs M- NF beats. Yeah. Well, you already know I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to nut over that because I love the chorus sounds and the choir sounds, so I'm probably going to have you do a lot of things with that. Yeah, when I produce your next album whenever that is, whenever I feel like it. <laughs> um the <laughs> you're uh uh I want to make sure that there's not too many choir like so, like I don't want to go too crazy because I could go yeah, crazy. Yeah, like, I could make multiple albums with these choirs. Like every song is gonna sound That's like dope. choir. They're gonna they're gonna start to think you're a monk. But <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with uh, that, bro. The choirs that's that's what gets down in your heartstrings and pulls at them. It's, <laughs> it's just it's what makes you intently listen to the music. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I'm just excited to use this. I used to use it, but I used it in Logic, and then I would make the stuff in Logic with the Omnisphere. And then I would put that stuff into Reason, and it was a whole mess, but now it's all in Reason, the program that I use. By the way, I'm going to make a video soon about how I made the pop and cipher beat. Fun oh, fact. Oh, you're going to do that? Not so nice. fun fact. Yeah. Not, st- Not so fun fact. I recorded it yesterday, and the audio didn't record when I did the screen flow. Oh, that, screen is, recording. that is just a horrible, horrible thing. Yeah, it was 20 minutes. and uh, That sucks. Yeah, it was a, definitely a mm. kick to the groin area. Mm. So this this product is called Omnisphere, right? Omnisphere. Yep, okay. made by Spe- we, Spectronics. Spectronics. Okay. We Spectronics. are not sponsored by Omnisphere. We've been reached out to be sponsored by several different like beat making softwares and stuff like that, but none of them seem legit. So we just want yeah, you guys to be aware. Yeah, we want you to be aware. We are very cautious of the sponsorships we take, and we want to make sure that they are good for you guys if we do take them. Uh, also, if you are somebody out there looking for spon- to sponsor someone and get your product out there, Joey and I, we're very willing to do stuff like that. But like I said, we, we're very cautious of what we choose. And uh, we definitely could have made some money showing you guys some fake products, but we're not about that life. We love you guys. So. Yeah, I think with all the ones that we've declined in the past couple of weeks, like for me, it was like a couple of months rent at least. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. We, we could have <laughs> got the bag, guys. You don't even understand. <laughs> we could have yeah. easily been well off for the next few months, but we just, yeah. you know, we we weren't feeling comfortable with these softwares. So. And now you're going to get advice on how to do good in music from people that are struggling to pay rent. So yeah. here you go. <laughs> <laughs> And that's another thing is like I feel like people think I make way more money than I do, man, and I don't, Same. bro. And uh, no. that's something I guess we can kind of get into. I know it's kind of taboo to talk about how much money you make on YouTube and how much money you make with music and stuff. We'll give you guys maybe some roundabout figures or something like that. I don't know. I don't want to tell you exactly yeah. how much it is, maybe. but it's not as much as you think. I can tell you that yeah. much. So yeah. Uh, so we could. Uh, how about we dive into this? All right, let's go let's right dive in. in. Swan dive, hands together above your head. Boo, Joey. How do I get big on YouTube? That's the that's that is the, the most that is the most uh, popular question I get. Uh, all right. Well, is that actually let one me of the talk questions? About... I'm not even looking in the comments of that video. I just know that's one of the I get in my DMs all the time. All right. Well, this is uh this could go back to what we were talking about before we jumped on this call together, like about how we could Penis talk sizes? about like no, uh no, before the other that. Thing. Okay, um, gotcha. Cuz remember it led into that conversation. Um uh, <laughs> <laughs> how we both came up on YouTube was very different. So, I think we could just like iron out how or sum up how it happened for both of us. So, for me, my first YouTube video I posted I think was in 2011, and it was a song with audio with a picture of me with a suit and tie on. I was adjusting my tie. The song was called Mohegan Sun. It's uh, it's out there. If you search oh. hard enough, it is out there. Is it actually your first one, or is it the first one you let people see? It was the first one I put on YouTube. Okay, gotcha. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe there's other ones that I took down that were just too horrendous. <laughs> But I don't know. All right. Anyways, I was doing that for a while. I was just putting up music videos. Um, Vin J mentioned this, but like back in 2013, I was doing uh, remixes 
for like popular songs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it would get me more views than I ever got on yeah. anything. But it wasn't like it wasn't like Vin J level views. You know what I yeah. mean? Like if he did a remix or something like that. Gotcha. So I was basically doing this for an audience that didn't exist. So mm-hmm. uh, for years and years and years, many years, let's say eight years, on YouTube specifically, I couldn't get an audience. I tried skits. I was doing skits for a while, like a lot of things. Wasn't working. And then um, for some reason, the – yeah, I'm just going to put it out there now. I never – I don't think I've ever mentioned his name. But Tristan uh, Parati – man, I'm saying his name wrong. <laughs> I knew him since high school. I went to oh, high man. school with somebody named Tristan, okay? Mm-hmm. And he's a vocal coach. And he does a channel called Vocal Coach Reacts. That's not the name of his channel. That's the name of his videos, mm-hmm. Vocal Coach Reacts. And uh, for some reason, he always liked my music. Like, even since, like, look, I don't think he liked it in high school. <laughs> but after <laughs> high school, like, when I was in college and stuff like that, he started to like my music. And he always was giving me, he was always telling me things. I still have the Facebook message he sent me, like, four years ago where he said, yo, I just started a YouTube channel. I don't really know if it's going to go anywhere, but I'll keep you posted. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. And then he hit me up like two weeks later saying, yo, I started doing vocal lessons and some people want rap lessons too. Like, do you want to like partner together and do it? Oh. And I I was like, uh, eh, let me know how it goes. You know, I don't really think I just want to do that right now. Just let me know how that goes. And of course he ended up making, (laughs) all right, he's doing well. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, is it? I wonder if it's the same guy that I've seen because I've seen people do that. How many subscribers does he have? Do you know? Or like, uh, I think about? he has over two million or something like. Dude, that. I'm almost certain this is the guy that I'm thinking of. Yeah, type it in. I'm pretty sure Tristan. Vocal uh, Coach Reacts. Let's see. I, a lot of people have brought on to this chain of Vocal Coach Reacts. Let me. God, there's so many now. What the fuck? Tristan Paradise. Par- yeah. Paradise? Start, yep, that's him. That's him. I was in math Dude, class with him, the specifically this, geometry. Oh, man. This is fucking weird, okay? Because I, like, watched him um, <laughs> talk about Gabby Hanna and her song Monster. Because I enjoy that song. Shocker. And, like, he did a reaction to that song and, like, some of the stuff she was doing wrong. That's wild. You went to fucking high school with that guy? Yeah. We sat in the same math class together. We were both from Hamden, <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> That's like, so wild, is... man. Yeah. Got a little so, gold uh, mine up there in the Connecticut realm. There's, uh, yeah, we got him, we got Dame Drops, and that's pretty much where it ends. Um, You got Webby, you got Anthony Fantano. Yeah, Webby. Well, I was talking about, like, you. oh, yeah, Anthony Fantano's here, too. We're all here. We're one big happy family. I don't think any of those people have, like, communicated with each other before. But anyways, yeah. that's not true. Dame and Anthony Fantano have been on a panel together at, like, VidCon oh, or dope. something. Anyways, I digress from my point. Is that a, the right statement? I digress from my I point. I digress? Does that mean you're I done digress. talking about it? Oh, well then, no. I, that's what I'm pretty sure that's what digress means. I heard somebody say it in a show once, and it sounded cool, and I apparently have been using it out of context so much. I think yeah, I even but, used it in a job interview once. That's probably why I didn't get the job. <laughs> uh, they're like, this My name is Joey idiot. Nato. I digress. <laughs> well, uh, like, you can't get the job because all we know is your name. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Um, yeah, so this uh, story is pretty cool. But anyways, one day... I see he has 500,000 subscribers out of nowhere. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't put two and two together that, like, he started doing reaction videos. And I didn't put two and two together that that's why he was doing so well mm-hmm. or why he grew so much. He was always trying different things on his channel. Like, he always uploaded all the time. And he always hit me up on Facebook giving me advice. Always. And I was always that person that was like, yo, this is amazing advice. This is incredible. I'm motivated now. And then I wouldn't do anything with it. Damn. Like, I wouldn't do anything with it at all. So then um, I tried to hit him up uh, to get in touch with him. Very hard to do at this point. Um, missed a lot of opportunities to talk mm. to this guy and work with him. And all he wanted to do was show love. Like, there was no reason why he had to, like, work with me or show me love or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But he did. And um, then mm, he, around the time he hit a million subscribers or something like that, I was working at a library. You know, I was I was staying up all night and then working at a library during the day. That was kind of my life. Mm. And I think I was in school at the time too. 
But anyways, they uh, he went on a live stream on his second channel, which has less subscribers and stuff. So I was like, okay, maybe I could reach him from here. And uh, I commented on one of his live streams where he was playing the guitar and singing. And he said, oh, shoot, Joey? Joey's here? Wow. Joey, can you hear me, Joey? And then uh, I was like, on, and this was at while I was at work. So I like mm-hmm. snuck away to a computer to do this. <laughs> and um, and I turned up the speakers very quietly just so I could barely hear them on there wow. and not get in trouble. But yeah, and then he was like, uh, he was like, yo, send me an email. Or, or I said like, yo, I'm going to send you an email. Da, da, da. He was like, yeah, send me an email. Da, da, da. And then he gave me advice on there. What he said on that stream was, Joey, if you're listening, you should do something called Music Producer Reacts. Wow. So because that's where it came from. That's where it came from. And then he wow. was like, yo, you should talk about like the different sounds you hear and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. I just think it would be really interesting. And that's something I would watch personally, blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, yo, I, no more missed opportunities. I'm doing Damn. it. And Man. then I did a few of them. And then they were getting pretty decent views for the for what I was getting. Like they were getting like, you know, 800, like 1,000 views, like something like that, which is mm. more than I was getting. And then I reacted to a BTS song, and then everything. that It's just been all up from there. Damn, man. So it's, it's one of those things uh, that... <clears throat> oh, shit. I just fucking broke my wall behind me. But, um, yeah, that's one of the things that I tell people all the time is it just takes one video. So would you say that BTS video kind of launched everything for you to where you could do yeah. this a lot more? You would say that? <laughs> yeah. Now, I have had music knowledge and knew what the hell I was talking about in the video, and I knew right. how to make it somewhat entertaining i had a good personality for it and i just i've been doing music for so long that i learned so many things that i could talk about those things in the videos but Man. yeah as soon as that happened the number has just been going up ever since and Man. it's uh that's dope it's not like shout i just sat to, back and watched it happen though yeah you know shout I mean? out to I, tristan yeah. for that dude because shout out to tristan in, yeah if i was in his position i would have ignored you completely i'd be like bro i fucking tried to give you advice for years on yeah. how to do this shit and you didn't accept it or, like, you just yep. kind of blew it off. You wanted, and, like, I don't know, you were one of those guys that you didn't buy into it until it was already happening. And those are the type of people I'd be like, you know what, fuck you. You didn't, you didn't come with me, so you're not going to be here now. I got I'm very just, I'm lucky. one of those, I'm a stubborn guy. So shout out to Tristan for that. Sounds like a really nice guy. Now, there is way more to the story, like. Uh, yeah, I'm sure uh, there is. That I missed out on, but maybe I could say that in a video on my own channel or something, but. Let's Damn. talk about Crip. Let's talk about Crip's come up. Okay, so uh, my come up was obviously way different than Joey's. Um, I did not start with rap or music at all. I, I sort of started with music. So the very first video on my channel is me throwing a wiffle ball at my phone and breaking my phone. Like it's Extreme. just just to show you how how weird this got. Then I moved on into I learned how to do very very minimal editing on Windows Movie Maker. And I was obsessed with Nazi zombies from Call of Duty. So I did like my own real life thing of that where I shot like a water bottle off a refrigerator. And like you hear the sound effects of the water bottle getting shot and like the round change and stuff like that that happens in zombies. And then uh, then I started getting into heavy metal music. And my brother and I downloaded FL Studio or Fruity Loops, which is what I still use to this day. But uh, it, we downloaded a free version of that because we heard Hobson talking about it. And we both oh, liked wow. Hobson. Yeah, we both liked Hobson back in the day. This was 2000... Uh, fuck, when was this? 2014, maybe? 2013? I think it was 2014. Um, so both of us knew who Hobson was. We liked his music. I wasn't rapping at all. I had literally never made a rap song ever. We just liked Hobson's music. And we both liked playing guitar and drums and heavy metal and stuff. And we heard him talk about FL Studio in a video one time. And uh, we downloaded that, figured out how to do some things, made like 20, 30 instrumentals that are awful because we had no idea how to mix. We had no idea how to do anything but record in FL Studio. Who made this beat? Crip? <laughs> Crip, yeah. <laughs> I just played the shit out of some heavy metal guitar, played drums on there, and that's where the music scene happened for us, or for me personally. And then my brother went, uh, he joined the Navy, so I just quit doing music altogether. And then uh, we both really liked watching people play Call of Duty online of all things. We were both really good at Call of Duty. Just, you know, we were teenage kids, so obviously we played Call of Duty a lot. And my brother, to try to keep in touch with me, he told me he wanted me to start making videos like 
people on YouTube that made them. There was a guy named Phase Jeff, if anybody knows who that is. Uh, he loved Phase Jeff. I loved Phase Jeff. And so I started to make Call of Duty videos like Phase Jeff did. Which, and we actually made a heavy metal song called Phase Jeff. But he follows me on Twitter now, which is fucking crazy. He was the guy that like wow. started, like gave me the inspiration to do YouTube in the Call of Duty scene. Um, so cool. yeah, I did Call of Duty videos forever, man. I did them for probably two and a half years, solid, and it never got above like 4,000 subscribers, I think. I think it took me two and a half years to get, actually, it took me two years to get to 100 subscribers. And then I stopped for about six months when I went to college. And then my senior year of college, I started back up and did it again. And started doing some more Call of Duty videos. And people started to see him a little bit more. I think it got up to maybe 1,000 to 2,000 subscribers. Before I did my first ever rap song. And uh, I don't remember why I did this. I just heard a beat one day on YouTube. I really liked it. And I just started to write. And uh, I made a rap song about a Call of Duty team. And people kind of liked it a little bit. I fucking hate it. It's still on my channel. It's called Phase Boys Rolling. But uh, yeah, I made that... And that was my first ever rap song I've ever done in my entire life. And I've spammed people on Xbox Live to go watch that. And just, like, it is so cringy, man. So bad. Oh, I need but to I did that, that. And uh, that was just in the middle of my Call of Duty stuff. I just randomly did a rap song one day. And then I went back to my Call of Duty videos. And mind you, these videos are getting, like, 50 views each. Like, sometimes I'll break 100. And if a video broke 100 views, I was fucking ecstatic. 100 yep. views and 10 likes, I was ecstatic. I felt like a celebrity. And then I, I did this did this for years, man. Did it for a long time. And then uh, I think I made another rap song about the same Call of Duty team like six months later after that. And it didn't get as much love. So I was like, okay, people don't like listening to me rap. So I just kept doing Call of Duty, kept doing Call of Duty. And so uh, one day, this is like the moment that sparked me rapping. Uh, there was a guy named Kiwis who is still a YouTuber who does Fortnite now. He has, I think, 3 million subscribers now. But at the time, he had 250,000, 300,000, something like that. And uh, I saw somebody make a diss track on him for some reason. I don't remember how I saw this. I just remembered seeing it. Uh, his team was having a recruitment challenge for people to join his team. He was in the biggest or like one of the biggest teams in Call of Duty called Red Reserve, which is coincidentally the chair that I'm sitting in right now. I'll get to that story here in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were doing a recruitment challenge for people to join that team. And... They just wanted funny people on the team. And I knew I was like halfway funny at my Call of Duty videos. So I just decided to make a diss track on him for some fucking reason. I don't know why I did this. And uh, he reacted to it on his channel. And that got oh. me my first push. I went from, you know, 100, 200 subscribers up to 1,000. And I was like, oh shit, this gets me noticed. Doing diss tracks on people gets me noticed. So I had that mindset. And I started fucking making diss tracks on everybody, man. Like fucking... Everybody that I could think of that had a name, I was making diss tracks on them, finding shit that I did not like about them, trying to get them to notice me in this way for some reason. I just thought it was a cool fucking thing. I thought it was a cool way to get noticed, and I thought that was the way to do it. And uh, I had uh, several people block me. I had several people tweet horrible things about me and just had a lot of negative things happen out of that. But I did have some more bigger people react to it and see the lightheartedness to it. There's another guy named Tensor who used to be in the same team as Kiwis was, but he's also another Fortnite YouTuber, has two or three million subscribers now. He did the same thing, reacted to it. I got another five or 600 subscribers off that. And I just did this. I was making Call of Duty videos, Call of Duty videos, trying to be funny. I was rapping in these Call of Duty videos. I was making diss tracks on people. And like that was my thing that I did for probably a year. And I went from 100 subscribers up to about four to 5,000. Oh, and wow. man... Uh, you know, time flies by, and then this Red Reserve team hosts another recruitment challenge that I went for, except I freestyled while playing a Call of Duty game. And, like, I was playing a free-for-all match, freestyling about the stuff that I was doing, and that was back when I knew how to freestyle just a little bit. I can't fucking do it now. But, uh, yeah, I was just doing that, and they really, really liked what I did, and I ended up joining this team based off of that. And so I, I joined Red Reserve, which was the second biggest Call of Duty team out there, and, you know, they gave me a big jump up to, I think, from four to 5,000 to 10,000 subscribers. And at this point, I was, like, so tired of playing Call of Duty, and I knew it wasn't getting me anywhere. The raps is what was getting me to where I wanted to be. Mm. So I kind of weaned myself off of Call of Duty. I, when I got to 10,000 subscribers, I started doing these rap challenges. And I think that's 
when, that's when a lot of people found me was I would do sped up rap challenges because I knew how to rap really fast. Oh, that's and, uh, interesting. I would, yeah. I'd find like Eminem songs or Tech Nine songs or Logic songs and just rap them and speed them up and rap them faster. And sometimes they got crazy good views. Sometimes they did horrible. Uh, I did a Rap God one that has a that's million views That's how I think I found now. you. I yeah, think has, that's how I found you, yeah. That's dope. So my Rap God video has over two, almost 2 million views now. But that video, uh, I think it got 4,000 views in a year. And so like it, it's one of those videos that blew up after the fact, which is crazy. Oh, wow. That, that like yeah. never happens, but it did. It had like 4,000 views in a year, and now it has almost 2 million views. But yeah, that's um, crazy. I did that for a long time, and I think I went from 10,000 subscribers up to 25,000 subscribers in a year. Mm-hmm. And just crazy shit happening. I thought I was a celebrity. And then I made an everything wrong with Rap Devil video. Because I really love Cinema Sins. I had a lot of rap knowledge at this point because I was studying rappers and different flows and techniques and stuff. And this video fucking blew up. It got a million views in a day. And I went from 25,000 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers in less than 30 days. And then Damn. from there, um, after that, during that time was when KSI said he was the best YouTube rapper. And then I, I heard Randolph talking about a song. And then I made a video on why KSI wasn't the best YouTube rapper. And then Randolph and Mini Mentor were talking about it. And Randolph said he made songs that were better than mine, which was true. But I was an arrogant asshole and didn't want to admit to that. So I made a diss track on him. And that also mm-hmm. got a million views in like a week. No, it didn't. It got a lot of views. It got like a half a million views in a week. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when Deji found me. Deji reacted to that. He had almost 10 million subscribers at the time. And then Deji flew me out to L.A. to make a diss track on Randolph after Randolph responded to other diss tracks. Just a crazy whole thing that happened. I gained 100,000 subscribers in September, another 100,000 subscribers in November, and then another 100,000 subscribers in December based off of the Unforgivable diss track. Like, it all happened so fucking quick. Really? I thought when you did Unforgivable, you already had like 300,000 subscribers or something like that. I was at 200,000 when I did Unforgivable. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I know you yeah, had more a, than me, but I didn't know. I don't know. Well, I don't remember it specifically, but I got a lot of subscribers that month. I know I had I had two hundred twelve thousand subscribers the day that I got recognized for being on that track. Because I was in Memphis at a Memphis Grizzlies game, and somebody recognized me. It was the first time I had ever been recognized in public. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's like, I, I saw you with Deji in L.A. I was like, Yeah, that's fucking crazy. And I remember going into that game, I had two hundred twelve thousand subscribers. And I was gaining like 10,000 subscribers a day. Yeah, that's a cool moment. Yep. And so ever since then, that's that's just what's been happening, man. Just working on music. And uh, it was a very weird come up for me. Yeah, it's, uh, but that's kind of how it is, though. Like, And I mentioned this in the last podcast. And, hey, man, you, you, you keep being a, uh, a testament to this. Is uh, the way you get on on YouTube as an artist is either with diss tracks Fuck you, man. Or, or making YouTube content <laughs> like that's not related directly to your music. Yeah. But. I think I got really lucky with this because I do not agree with diss tracks being the way to go. It's very stupid what I did, and I'm lucky enough that somebody good enough didn't call my bluff and just completely shit on my career and stop me from growing because it easily could have happened. I was not very good, but I thought I was the shit. Mm. So, and don't do that. If you're watching this, do not make diss tracks on people to get your name out there. It's good for immediate views, but if you fuck around with the wrong person, they can end you. They can make sure you do not make it further. Especially if you piss off the wrong person, because I've seen it happen. Yeah, I know. I, hell, I've have. done it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's um, that's good advice, because I think it is an easy thing to fall for. Uh, yeah. And, like, Everybody that was Rice Gum's strategy. To like yeah, it was Rice Gum's like strategy. He he got lucky, man. Like I said, he's one of those guys that nobody really good enough called his bluff until it was too late. Yeah, pretty much. It's a gamble. If you want to try it, I mean, you can go for it. But saying if you piss off the wrong person, man, they can they can shut you down. They really yeah. can. But one thing about like coming at like artists or YouTubers that are like higher up than you is. Why would see that? That's why you got lucky because they gave you the time of day, like they mm-hmm. acknowledged you, which is weird. <laughs> like I yeah. don't know why they would like if somebody dissed me and I didn't know who they were, like I never heard of them. 
I probably wouldn't care. I'd be like, okay. Mm-hmm. You I know. think I must have said something that sparked them because I get a d- lot of diss tracks made on me too for people that don't know me. But I've, I mean, there was a guy named MC Nemesis that said something in the diss track that fucking sparked something in me that made me want to find him. Like, I, you can ask my mom. I was looking for his house. I was going to go to his house and find him. I was so pissed. And it's because I knew this guy had never met me before. And like one of the, I'm not going to say what he said, but one of the specific things sparked something in my brain that made me want to mm. fucking find him and just beat the shit out of him. So I don't know if that's what happened with these guys. Maybe I said something that made them want to show people how shitty of a human being I was. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but that's that's an interesting come up right there. And that just goes to show there's many different ways to come up in this game. Uh, there's some things I did leave out. Like I do want to shout out Dame Drops, the food review critic. Uh, or mm-hmm. he calls himself the food titan. Sorry, should mm. be respectful. Call him the food That's titan. That's a fucking name right there. Um, he does food reviews out of his car. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, He's the one that got me in front of my first audience rapping because he, I did a... Uh, all right, let, let, let me just talk about this really quick, really quick. Um, we both worked at CarMax, and I he started working at the branch that I was working at when he um, when he blew up with his Five Guys Burgers and Fries review, and then mm. the uh, Shamoyo, Shamoyo brothers, the Gregory brothers, when the Gregory brothers remixed it and put that yes. out. That Then it went, like, super viral. Um, but I was like, yo, and one of, my, one of my workers or coworkers there was like, yo, you know Dame Drops is like, I know you're doing your thing on YouTube and you do music and stuff. You know Dame Drops is like a YouTube star, right? And I was like, what? Or they said Damon. <laughs> they didn't say Dame Drops. He said right. Damon because that was his name. <laughs> but, yeah. And they just, uh, I went up to him. I was like, yo, do you have, like, a theme song or anything like that? He was like, well, I have some. My boy is working on it, but he's taking forever on it. So if you want to try it, then go ahead. And, of course, <laughs> I jumped on that opportunity and did it. Smart. And then we ended up shooting a video for it. Got some free bur- Five Guys Burgers and Fries, some free McDonald's all in the same day. Oh, it was amazing. Damn. Um, That's dope. And we were I like rapping in the restaurants. Early. Damn, I d- I've never yeah. seen this. Yeah, it's called Super Official. Uh, it was, came out in 2012 or 2013, and the video got like 100,000 views like quickly. And Damn. that was the first time I got an immense amount of hate comments mm, on a video yeah. and like pointed towards me. And when you first get them, you're like, Shoo. you're confused. Yeah. You're like, why are people saying these things? Like, man, what? Like, I was really confused. And I texted Dame. I was like, why are people saying these things? And he was like, welcome to YouTube. That's what he said. <laughs> and then and after that, was... that, I started to become more numb to it. I was like, okay, yeah. this is just what it is. Um, now some man. of them are funny if they're creative enough. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm right there with you, man. That's another thing, dude. I forgot about that. The first time I ever received, like, a lot of hate comments because I used to get a little during, doing the diss tracks early on, but I was so small. Sure. Like it didn't. I would get like maybe two or three a video, and oh, then gotcha. now, yeah. like the I remember the first time, dude. This actually happened. The first time I ever got an immense amount of hate comments was doing the everything wrong with Rap Devil video, the video that blew up that made my career take off. I got so many hate comments in the first hour of the video that I actually deleted it and took it down. And then, like, so many people were tweeting at me. It's like, hey, I didn't get to see the video. I was really interested. And I was like, I got so many hate comments. Like, I, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want that. And then Matt PFV, of all people, he said, like, never delete a video. Because there was a video that he almost deleted that had a ton of hate comments. But he left it up. And then, like, a few days later, it got a million views. And it's Shasta a it's Matt a feature PFV. that he did. Yeah, it's a feature that he did with a woman. I can't remember her name, but it's a really good song. So I was like, fuck it. So I re-uploaded the video. And then I woke up to almost a million views. That so is, yo, talk about lucky. Yeah. Shout That's out to Matt PFV. That's insane. PFV, like, the algorithm could have been like, screw you. You had your chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. yeah, it only had, just, like, 2,000 views yeah. after the first hour when I deleted it, but I had, like, 30 or 40 hate comments. And I was like, fuck this. I, I can't deal with this. I wasn't, like, mentally stable enough to deal with that. So I just deleted the video altogether. And then, uh, yeah. The rest is history. That's Ever since insane. then, I just let it happen. If I get hate comments, I know it's people hating. 
That's so, insane. It is what it is. Yeah, I went through a, a spurt of a lot of hate comments, dude, because I did everything great with Killshot, more hate comments, and then I did the Randolph disc, a fuckload of hate comments. Then I did Unforgivable. Yeah, sure. Holy fucking shit. Dude, I had people threatening me. That was the first time I ever got death threats was after Unforgivable. Mm, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes but. sense. So casual. Oh, somebody threatened I mean, to kill it, you? That makes I sense. I don't know what that's like. I, I haven't <laughs> got death threats. The the worst thing I've ever got is an email of somebody like really going at me hard, and then I do what I usually do. I comment in a very civil, civilized way. Saying, hey, man, yeah, I do that I now. I did it back a in the day. day. I hope your day gets better. You know I mean? <laughs> You're one of those guys uh, killing with kindness. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, dude, back in the day, I'd be like, fuck you, and, like, give him my address and, like, tell him to come find I actually did that when I went to record the album with you. There was a guy talking shit to me on Twitter, and I gave him the address of the hotel that I was staying at and told him to meet me there. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I don't fuck around, guys. <laughs> What's the point of that? Who's who's gonna get on a plane and like fly all the way there? I don't know. Possibly, but it, I, it was a <laughs> <laughs> it was the principle. Like I was not afraid of this guy. I let him know where I was gonna be at. If he wanted to do what he was saying that he wanted to do, he would have done it. And he bitched out and it. fucked that guy. I still hate that I guy. I don't it. know his name, but I, I fuck. Okay, you get it. Cool. Okay, so let's uh let's go ahead. Let's go into these comments now that we've talked about our come up and uh, answer some of these questions that people had asked on this pinned comment. Yeah. I think this is a really interesting episode so far. Hopefully. Yeah. Make sure to drop a comment on Spotify letting us know if you think this is interesting yeah. so far. <laughs> a comment on Spotify, <laughs> please. Make sure you stream it on YouTube as well. Yeah. Stream it on YouTube and comment on Spotify. Uh, all right. So let's go in here. Um, we'll probably have to edit a little bit of this out because some of these we've probably already answered. How do I get my music to get noticed? Uh... Okay. Did we kind of did well, we answer that? Well, the way that I did it, and uh, because my music ended up getting noticed somehow, because I was doing reaction videos, but it was pretty much as simple as make content that you know the market likes. Like, as soon as I started doing music producer reacts, it was obvious that people liked the content, and everything else I put out before, people didn't like. So put out content that you know people like, and mix in your own content in between. Use Utilize those uh, end screens to feature your own music. Plug it as intro. Something that I think is overlooked, which I think is an even better idea, is plug in your music for like 10, 15 seconds, like in the middle of a video, right when you know oh. you have a viewer's attention. Yeah. Um, yeah, Joey and I yeah. both kind of do that the same way. We make other content that we know people want to look at and then we mix in our own content as well and um i mean i still struggle to get my music noticed on spotify for sure like i have 870,000 subscribers now but i only have like 150,000 listeners on spotify so like i'm still trying to figure that part out so like neither one of us like i said we're both not satisfied with where we're at and we're both trying still to get our music out there to people and so, like, I, I do the reaction series. For one, people like my opinion on some of the music. Same as Joey, people love his opinion on music. And we both have different takes from it. Like, I analyze bar breakdowns and flow schemes and stuff like that. He analyzes, the like, the fucking beat and shit that I can't even understand. Um, so, like, we both do different things to get people's attention. And then we have our own music that people might accidentally find. And I know, f for me personally, when I did the tour with Mac Lethal, I had a ton of people say, I know you from your NF reactions or your Eminem reactions, mm -hmm. and then I heard that you make music, and I looked at your music, I was like, holy shit, this guy's really good. And oh then, you my know, God. they, they the become best. fans. That's the best comment. Yeah, dude. That, like, I, to I, like I tell them at the shows, too. I was like, that is the exact reason. Like, that is, it's so great to see that that's working out. So, because it's like yes. a two birds, one stone sort of thing. People get to see me break down their favorite artist, and then they mm -hmm. hear that I have music and become a fan. So, yep. that's definitely one way to do it. Uh, another way to do it, Vin J talked about this in a previous podcast and we talked about it earlier is to do remixes of popular songs and as soon as they come out it's a good way to get quick views um, so like when Eminem drops a single that's got a pretty gritty nice beat that people fuck with uh, find that beat instrumental somewhere it'll be out on YouTube within an hour because people are crazy quick with that kind of stuff and write fast. a remix to it get it out yes. within a day Yeah. yes fast yeah you gotta do it quick you gotta do it within a day maybe two days at the most, uh, and it has to be good. That's another thing. Is it has to be good. You can't just put a half ass remix out there. People got to like it. Exactly. Yep. All right. Um, 
Do you want to just read the questions? I don't really have a... I can't. I mean, I guess I could take out my phone. Uh, I got you sound better right when you ask questions. Okay. <laughs> uh, some of these are suggestions, not even questions. Okay. Uh, another question is, how did you manage to build your fan base? I guess we kind of already answered that, too. A lot of the stuff we talked about earlier pretty much covers every question that you guys can ask. Uh, we just we do reactions to get people to you know pull them in to watch stuff that they like, and then they happen to hear our music as well. And that, that yeah. works that way. I think it is important to do something if you're going to do reactions or breakdowns or whatever type of video you're going to do that's different from the from your music. I would say make sure it's something you do enjoy and get excited for. Like, yeah. There's like, I mean, I stay kind of true to that because I could, you could get depressed pretty quickly, especially on YouTube. Yes. If you're doing Very stuff quickly, you don't want to do. It doesn't matter if you're racking in the views or not. Um, and you just become numb to them at some point. Mm-hmm. So you really have to be doing something that you like. And uh, I do that a lot. Like a lot of people say, like, why didn't you react to this so fast? Or why didn't you react to this fast? Why didn't you react to this fast? I didn't feel like doing it. <laughs> and then the video <laughs> yeah. would have sucked because I would have yeah. been like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And you can tell it too, especially if you're another creator. You can tell when somebody's not feeling a video that they're making. Yeah. And it's happened to me several times where I've like, it happened to me during the last Eminem album specifically is I was reacting to so many videos and like, I was just like, man, I just want to sit here and listen to this album. I don't want to have to work while listening to this new Eminem. Uh, I felt like I was working, making these videos and I wasn't enjoying the song. I wasn't enjoying making the videos. People were expecting things from me and I just, I didn't want to do it. Like I was just so I just stopped doing it and people kept asking me why I didn't react to the rest of the album why I didn't continue on with the everything great with videos and it's because like I just I didn't want to do them anymore they were becoming too troublesome and I was not enjoying what I was doing yeah it's really important what is the copyright rules when it comes to using other beats and I think you know a little bit more about this than I do uh when it comes to using other beats so yeah I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of rules. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. So, I mean, thing, if you're talking about... Go ahead. I was just going to say one thing with, like, the remixes, because I think that might be what they're talking about, is you can't expect to be paid from remixes. Like, it's their beat. They have a copyright on it. You can't get paid from it. So, that's just... That's the matter of the fact. It's, um, you know, it's one of those things you have to sacrifice. You either do the remixes, get a fan base, and you don't get paid for it, or you can do your own song and, I guess, get paid for it, but it's not going to get the fan base and it's not going to get the views that you want uh yeah yeah that was the same like for a while maybe that's why i stopped doing remixes because i saw that copyright claim thing back in the day like Mm -hmm. when i say back in the day i mean like 2014 (laughs) whatever it was 2015 when i was doing a lot of remixes um and i'd be like oh this is copyright claim i could i'm not touching this i'm not messing with this maybe i should even take the video down but then uh, it was Tristan again that told me like, um, you know, you should do remixes more. I liked when you did remixes. I was like, no, they got copyright claimed. He was like, it's fine if they get claimed. A copyright strike is bad. You just yeah. don't want it to get. If it gets claimed, that's fine. The the company's just making money off the video, and you probably wouldn't have made money off of it anyway, um, yeah. because it wasn't getting that much reach. And I was like, oh, all right. Yeah, and claims, that kinda are, changed claims everything are just for me. annoying. Like, you have a lot more freedom than you think on YouTube. Claims are just annoying. Uh, strikes are bad. You don't want strikes. Claims, you know, you just don't get money for it. And, <clears throat> you know, I've had, God, I've had so, so much money just, like, taken because of the claims, which sucks when you get to a stature of, like, I've gotten to where some of my reactions get, you know, five, 600,000 views, and it's all claimed, so I don't get a dime from it. I guess that's why people think I make more money than I actually do is because I yeah. pull in, like, eight, nine, ten million views a month but I only get paid for like a million and a half, two million views, maybe at, at best. I have so, so much money taken because of the copyright claims. It's crazy. Yeah, same. Um, but you always fight the claims, right? Like the claim. I, I've, I fight the claim if I think yeah. I can win it. Because uh, some, like, really? I fought the claim on my Godzilla remix because it was a completely different beat. And I actually paid for that fucking beat, too. That's the thing. And I got I won sharing revenue. I didn't win the entire thing, but they shared the revenue with me, which is way okay. better than nothing. Uh, yeah, and that has sure. you know 1.4, 1.5 million views now. So yeah, yeah, that's a lot of money I would have missed out on. But um, um, you know sometimes I always fight the claim. I, always. Yeah, but you've also gotten copyright strikes. 
Well, that's because I dispute. Oh, the you dispute. Oh, so you fight the claim. Or I, I appeal. And then I you appeal. disputed. Yeah, you yes. appealed the claim. Gotcha. Yes. So yeah, I don't do you, that. I mean, the way it works is if you get a copyright claim, this is for, I know you know how it works. For everybody, it, this is how it works. For you put out a reaction video, somebody, uh, the publishing company, most of the time, or whoever, or distribution UMG. company, <coughs> whatever, claims it. Yeah, UMG. Claims it, then you can fight it. You could be like, uh, whether you're, I mean, okay, I'm not going to say all that, but you fight it. You say, hey, this is fair use. Uh, this is a reaction video. I, you know, and you say what, you plead your case, basically. You submit it. And then they have 30 days, I think, to tell you. Yeah, they have 30 days. If uh, they'll release the claim or not. Um, they and won't. then <laughs> uh, sometimes they say. They don't. I don't want to deal with it. All right? Here, take the money. Yeah, I don't want to deal with it. And then that's a victory. Like, yes. I don't think you. No, you get, you get a notification about it. You get an email about it. If you win a dispute, they don't even email you. They just. Like, yeah, yeah dude, the last time I won a fucking dispute, God, it was the Godzilla one, and the, it wasn't a one dispute. It was a this company has agreed to share the revenue, and I don't even know what the share is. They could give me one percent, and they take ninety nine percent, so I have no idea. Mm. But like I, I know I've appealed a ton of things. Like I remember I appealed a MGK versus Eminem lyric breakdown video where I didn't play a single second of music, didn't show any images. I literally typed all the lyrics on my own on my notepad highlighted the rhyme schemes and everything and compared the lyrics and that video got copyright claimed and then I appealed it and then my appeal got rejected and then I disputed that because I was like and there's no fucking way that mm-hmm. I, this is copyright claimed and then mm-hmm. that got it rejected they didn't give me a strike but I got a message from them personally saying that they own the lyrics to the video yeah oh yeah they'll message you because then the lawyer of the label yeah. or something will email you at that point yeah um, it's, it's so shitty like it, it's so, like, it's shitty, dude. Because I, I remember spending hours making that video, and then somebody else gets paid for my own research, my own breakdowns. Like, I didn't use anything that was theirs besides breaking down what they said. And, like, you can't, you don't own fucking words. It was so weird. I didn't like it. But yeah, I that's guess the. They do, that had to be the case, right? I don't know. I don't know what the rule is. Just, if you use somebody else's beat, don't expect to get paid for it. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. You can do it, just don't expect to get paid for it. Yeah. Um, to wrap up what I was saying, if you do do a claim and then you fight it and then you lose when you fight the claim, and you should always fight the claim. I say always fight the claim because yeah, there's that makes usually sense. nothing that bad that could come out of that. But if you if you lose and then you want to appeal that decision, then you're in choppy waters. Then you're yeah. you're you're in you're in NATO territory because you can end up with two copyright strikes like me. So. uh yeah. yeah, I did have one thing happen though. My most viewed video is everything great with Killshot, uh-huh. and I uploaded this video, and it got like a hundred and fifty thousand views in an hour. To this day, it's my fastest growing video ever. That's, got that in an hour, crazy. and then UMG claimed it after the first hour, and I appealed it, and then they took my video down. They didn't. I didn't get a strike or anything. They just took my video down completely, and so I re-edited Insane. the video and like changed the pitch of Eminem's voice and put it back up, and then it was fine. But, yeah, mm, I guess I got lucky okay. and didn't get a strike then. But it definitely got deleted. Like, they took my video down. But it's still up now with the, the pitched voice. Yeah, with the pitched voice. And it's my most viewed video. And it's at, you own that video? I did for, like, six months, and then they claimed it. Nice. Yeah, it's fine after that. You did you did what you needed to do. Yeah, I, I got some money from that one. That's dope. But, yeah, so. any, any video I've ever made about Eminem or related to Eminem now... All of it is claimed. <laughs> it's like I don't make a single Eminem, NF, Logic, specifically zero dollars made from any of them, and that's like seventy million views from my channel. That's why I don't react or do videos too much about like mainstream artists. Yeah, because I know that's how it's gonna be. But yeah, and see, those are the only artists that I really react to because I'm a huge fan of all of those guys, and I have fun listening to the music and trying to break it down. And I do get a lot of fans from those videos. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes they translate over to my music. But, uh, yeah, definitely no money there. Which sucks in a time like now where I have to rely heavily on YouTube for income. Yeah, 
I get it. <laughs> What's next? Those are the, those are really all the questions. The rest of them are. Oh, really? You should react to were this. They like yeah. Repetitive? <laughs> uh, no, uh, they're like you should react to this. Hey, crypt rap like I ain't by Tech Nine on one of your channels is one of the questions to that. Really? Um, Did you look at the pinned comment and see all the comments? Yeah, these there? are the replies. These are the replies to the pinned comments, and that was one of the replies. Rap like I ain't by Tech Nine, which is a great song, but. Huh. Well then, I guess this wasn't in as much of a demand as I thought it was. It is. It's just people didn't watch this episode or watch that ah, certain clip. Gotcha. <clears throat> all right. Like the well, thing is. Attention all upcoming artists. Our next episode will feature advice, tips for upcoming artists, YouTubers. Leave a comment in the comment section for this video with any questions you may have. And one of the questions says, I say features. I want to see if six seconds, or I want to see six seconds on a lot of tracks with Crypt, Honey Koofies, Samad Savage, Dizzy 8, Dwayne TV, and Lex, and Moxes. That's a lot like of a, talent. Yeah, but that's not, okay. Oh, some other people <laughs> have asked questions in the comments instead of the reply. Uh, question for Nato. What's the best, preferably free, program for beginning producers? Uh, free is a lot to ask for. <laughs> yeah. I don't think... Uh, you know what? Free is just a bad idea, okay? Free mm -hmm. doesn't motivate you. If my first program that I bought was Propellerhead Reason... And it was like $400, and I bought it when I was like in sixth grade or something like that. And I uh, I don't know how I got the money, <laughs> but I ended up getting the money for it. I think I may have been working at a supermarket or like shoveled driveways or raked leaves, something. But mm -hmm. anyways, when when you pay money for software or something like that and you invest into it, it makes you want to do it more. If you do, if you get something for free, you're not gonna want to use it, or maybe you're not gonna feel like using it. Like there's no motivation behind it. There's when you buy something, it's like, oh, I bought this. Like I spent my hard-earned money on this. I better use it and it makes make it worth it. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think exactly. that's already the a losing mindset. Is you know I and I don't care if you're 12 or 13 asking that question or something like that. There's ways to make money. This is America, <laughs> people. I don't know if you live in America, <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> like I'm there's, just saying. I'm pretty sure we have a lot of UK viewers, but okay. Yeah, well, but uh, aren't they doing fine in the UK too? I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I, I don't know. It's I don't know either. Uh, I will say I used uh, I used a demo version of FL Studio for years. Yeah. And it was free, obviously, but you can't save your projects, so you have mm -hmm. to keep the program open constantly. Yep. And once you export something, it has to be the final product. Like you can't yep. edit it. You can't do anything. And, like, there were countless times I was working on a song and my computer would fall asleep or the program would crash and I lose every single bit of it. So it's yep. just, it was annoying. Don't do that. I did that for a long time, but then I bought the producer version of FL Studio and I've had that for a long time. So We're not sponsored by Serato Studio. I did a sponsorship for them on my channel and they're freaking amazing, amazing yeah. people. And uh, I got to say, Serato, if you're just starting out with making beats, like, no, nothing at all. I would get Serato Studio. Um, How much is that? Two months free, I think, with my code Lucky Boy. I think it is. But mm. uh, I've seen you talk about it on your Instagram. Yeah, it's on uh, my. YouTube channel, I did a video about Serato Studio. I I don't know how much it is a month, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> it's like or one how of the things you have general. to know. I know but that uh, it's not as FL expensive Studio, as Reason, the program yeah, I Yeah, Reason is fucking expensive, dude. So, But FL Studio, they have a base version where you can edit your own stuff yep. and like save your projects and stuff. It's $99 for a year, I believe. Might That's even amazing. be a lifetime. I, I can't remember. I think, it, But I do think it's for sure $100 for a year. So, I mean, if you save up ten dollars a month you got a little extra so you can you can definitely try that out yeah and that's uh yeah i think that's a, i think that's the best lesson that i that i taught though right there is that get out of the free mind state like that's not yes the agreed. way to go and even uh, jay-z used Instagram. to say that you you said you talked about that on your instagram yeah my instagram live like an hour before this started is i i don't like when things are free i don't like mm -hmm. when uh 
like talking about the editors for this, people saying they would edit it for free. I don't like that because there's like no motivation mm-hmm. for you to get it done. I want exactly. to pay for your services. Same thing for people offering for free artwork and stuff. Like it, I don't like that. When I pay you, we can have a schedule. We can make sure everything's met on time for you to get your money. It's a yep. working thing and it always works better when stuff is paid for rather than being free. Yep. So Absolutely. So, is, Any uh, more uh, questions? Yep, yep, I was already <laughs> doing it. So uh, should you produce, <laughs> right. mix, master your own music? Like, is there a good reason to? So this this guy wants to know if you should produce, mix, and master your own music. Uh, I only did it because I didn't have a choice when I was first starting out. Like, I started off with a, a Yamaha keyboard, mm-hmm. and that's all I had. And it had, like, six different tracks to individually do. And I was working with another artist. I was in a duo with an artist named L2B. You should check him out, E-L, number two, B. E E. Shouts out to it. that guy. Yeah, <laughs> shouts to him. Uh he uh me and him had like a duo in like sixth grade and we were both, you know, really into run DMC and M and M. And uh <laughs> we would make these songs and we would only have the keyboard to make the beats on them. And I was the one with the keyboard, so I started making the beats and then when I started like making songs with friends in my neighborhood and stuff like that. I was the one with uh, the computer and the Beats and the Walmart microphone and stuff like that. So that's kind of just how it came to be. I just People started relying on me for stuff like that. Damn. And that's just how it worked out. I think it is convenient, but I think it's also important to branch out and work with different creatives um, to try different sounds and stuff, especially when you're still trying to quote-unquote find your sound. Yeah. So uh, – I think yeah, it's a but good idea. I would love to hear Crip's take on this. I think it's a good idea to learn how to mix, master, and produce your own stuff. Um, mm. But I definitely recommend branching out as well because that's how I found Joey. Is I needed somebody to mix my own stuff, and I needed somebody that knew how to make beats to make beats for me as well. And I think it's that's partially of how we became friends was because we worked together on so many different things because of that. But uh, mm. the fact of the matter is, like Joey knows how to do that stuff way better than I did despite all the research that I've done and trying to learn how to do it. Like, I know how to mix my own stuff. I know how to make beats on a very, very minimalistic level to where if Joey was not available for some reason to do a mix for me, I can do it. So, like, my normal videos where I do ads for companies and I do, like, a rap in there, I know, like, I mix all of those most of the time. There's been a handful of times where Joey's mixed it for me. But most of the time, I mix those, and they don't sound bad, but they're not as crisp and high quality as Joey knows how to make them. So I definitely recommend... Uh, learning how to do it just in case you ever get caught in a bind, but 100% working with someone that knows your sound, knows what, you, knows how to make you sound good and professional like Joey knows how to do with me. Yeah, I think uh, you brought up a great point that having your own setup is important for those type of situations mm-hmm. where maybe someone, where you uh, can't get something back from someone in time and when you need it, like some time-sensitive stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it is important to have your own setup and know how to at least hit record and <laughs> record your vocals yeah. and make it sound, have the decency and willpower to go on YouTube, type in a tutorial, how do I make my vocals sound clearer, and then just do exactly what they do, at least. Yeah. Just to do that. And it helps, Effort, you, com- people. <laughs> it helps you communicate with people too because like I know a lot of, from all the research that I've done, I can communicate with Joey on what I want certain things to sound like. So I can tell them I want a little bit more reverb here. I want this slight echo effect on here. This sounds too compressed. Like I know certain verbiage that he knows to where I can like halfway understand a conversation with him and let him know how I want something to go. So I, that's another yeah. reason I think it's good to at least understand the basics to things. Yeah. And there's tutorials everywhere. Fruity Loops, FL Studio, you can do it there. What are you mixing? Do you mix in Reason as well? Or Logic? No, I mix in Pro Tools. Jesus Christ. Okay. Not that I really recommend it, though. If you uh, don't have any software um, experience, I would say to use Ableton because Mm. Ableton is just dope, and I wish I learned how to use it a long time ago, but I'm stuck with Pro Tools because that's what I work fastest in now. So. Yeah, same with me. I'm stuck in Fruity Loops just because I know it like the back of my hand. But everybody in the industry, I feel like, uses Pro Tools for mostly everything. Yeah. I mean, Pro Tools is cool, but the only thing I like about Pro Tools, to be completely honest with you, is when you export a song, you have to sit there and listen to the whole song every time. Oh, really? At least with the version I have. 
Maybe it's because it's an older version. I don't know. I need to upgrade my software and stuff. So. Gotcha. But yeah. <laughs> um, I believe that's the last question. Uh, wow. Well, not somebody. A lot of I think somebody asked, "How do they find their own sound?" Let me see if I can find that one. Okay. Yeah. So this one really is a good question. It says he basically asks, "How does he find his own style?" Because he listens to a lot of artists and he feels like he's copying his favorite artists, and he wants to do his own sound. He doesn't want to sound like his favorite artists. So how how would you tackle that? <laughs> uh, well, first of all, um, everybody's influenced by somebody in the industry, mm-hmm. like in the music industry. All these artists that you listen to were influenced by somebody. Um, it might have been even somebody before your time. So you don't realize it, but I will say, yeah, you don't, it's, you, you want to stand on your own. You don't want people being like, Oh, you sound like this person. Oh, you sound like this person. That's a pet peeve for me. I hate he, that. Same dude. Fucking, um, you even said that in a song that you have coming out that you let me listen to. You uh, said, I did. Oh, this sounds like, nah, you ain't never heard nothing like this. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I remember hearing that. I was yeah. like, Oh, get him, Joey. Fucking fight him, man. I was like, I was like, fucking, it's always putting the dukes up. He's ready to fight anybody that says he sounds yo. like somebody else. So yeah, I, you I'm be right listening, there with you. yo. Yeah, you dude, be listening. I'm a fucking dude. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, when when I played that song for you, and no, we can talk about the song. Uh, okay. We'll talk about it at the end. All right. Through the little shameless self promotion. Um, very shameless. We could talk about it for like thirty minutes. Okay, uh, <laughs> it's a good kidding. song. Uh, but anyways, uh, how many times am I gonna say uh? Uh, ah. <laughs> ah. Yeah, so when it comes to how I handled this situation because I was getting like heavy influences from like um Drake when, when Drake first came out, first of all Drake is still bleeding over to almost everybody now doing that uh yeah and then like putting those yes in mm-hmm. between phrases and stuff. Nobody was doing that. And then Drake started doing it, Damn. and now everybody does it to this day. Damn. See, I and, don't rap um, like that, so I'm, I'm not even aware of like yeah, Drake's you influence to everything. So he, he's definitely gonna you got the influence. motorboat. Yeah. You just keep going. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, but anyways, the um, thing that I did is I cut off listening to the artist. To be honest with you, if Damn. you can't handle it, some people just can't handle it. Some people can't control themselves by getting subconsciously inspired. And then you want to sound exactly like that person. Mm. I would just stop listening to that person or not listen to him as much. That's it's, honestly what I did with Meek Mill, Big Sean. Like, these were my favorite artists. Meek Mill, Big Sean. Um, <laughs> I went through my Cameron stage. That was really cringy. Because <laughs> I'm rapping like Cameron, like making up words and talking in even a deeper voice. <laughs> like, I used to rap in a deeper voice when I was 14. Damn. How the hell does that happen? Um, but, yeah, that's what honestly what I do. Yeah, and that's funny because I've NF is one of my favorite artists, and I watched an interview with him with him one time, and he said the same thing. Like he just doesn't listen to anyone else's music but his own, because he yep. he starts copying what he hears just because that's what his thing yep. is. And like, I don't really have. I mean, I do have that problem because obviously, obviously, you can hear some influences that I have, but it is a huge pet peeve of mine when people tell me I sound like NF just because of a certain instrumental type that I like, or just because I get emotional in a song. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I've always felt like I've had my own style with with influences from certain people. Cause like I know doubles. The only reason I do doubles is because I heard Eminem do it, and I still do it to this day subconsciously. <laughs> that is the only reason I have doubles ever is because I heard Eminem do it. Um, I hate doubles. Yeah, I know you do. You always take mine out. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I don't know, fast flows and you stuff took like, like that. Two hours to get them right. Uh, Eminem never really rapped that fast up until here recently. I don't feel like, but I've always just liked yeah. to rap fast. It's just naturally what my mind goes to. So there wasn't, like, there's nobody I'm trying to copy or anything like that. It's just what my brain goes to when I hear a beat. I just naturally want to rap quicker on a beat. Um, mm-hmm. I know early on my rhyme schemes were heavily influenced by Hobson because he has this triple rhyme scheme that he really loves to do. Like the last three syllables of each bar rhymes with each other. I used to do that a lot, but now I've, I've kind of moved away from that. Um, do you have an example? I, I want to hear an example um, if you have one. Sticking my dick in a toaster. Flaming so hot. Bitch in a roaster. Something like that. Like, that's what it would be like. You know what I'm talking about? Dick in a toaster. Huh. Bitch in a roaster. 
Oh, rhyming all the okay. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and I can't think of like yeah. a, a bar off the top of my head, but like he he does the triple rhyme at the end every like a lot does it a lot. If you listen to Hobson, he does it a ton. That'd and, be hilarious uh, if we got copyright claimed for this. Probably, video now. <laughs> I feel like it'd be something <laughs> they said too. Uh, so like in his recent song, he says, "Dick in my right hand, hi my friend." Like my right hand, hi my friend. Like he he does that. Yeah. I don't get it. He he has a line where he's talking about jacking off, and he says, "In my right hand, da 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 da." Hi, my friend, da 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 da. Sky night ends. You, you know what I mean? Oh, I mean I get the rhyme. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm talking okay. about. Is the rhyme the rhyme scheme? Oh, okay. I thought you were trying to. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what that's what I was talking about. But yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Joey has good advice though. Don't listen to your favorite artists if you don't want to sound like them. Straight up. Honestly, that is yeah. the best way to do it. And uh. Yeah, I don't know. I can't listen to music normally anymore because I'm constantly critiquing and like hearing things that I don't like or hearing things that I do like, and like wishing certain things happened a different way. It sucks. <laughs> I I watched your um Quadeca reaction for Quadeca's new song, mm-hmm. and I heard you like start talking about the instruments and stuff, and I was like, Yo, Crip would have never done this. I like, know. Six months ago or something like that. Yeah, I even said that I'm just not, I'm not even gonna fun. talk about this. I'm gonna leave this to Joey Nato. <laughs> You were like the horns, and I don't think there were any horns in the beat. There were definitely horns in the beat. Fuck you. I I did not hear any horns. There were horns. There were big horns. Big, fat ones. (laughs) (laughs) They were loud. I heard them. (laughs) I probably didn't know Um, the word for it. It's probably a synth, but I called it a horn. Probably. I say synth a lot because most of the time things are synths. Yeah. Like, literally, that's what they are. It's an easy scapegoat. No, it's not. (laughs) It's an easy easy scapegoat. Any song, if it's a piano, it's a a nice synth there, and it's a fucking grand piano. (laughs) He's the- so smart and knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel like watching Anthony Sant- or Anthony Fantano sometimes because he like, he talks about stuff like that and I've like caught him saying since when it was a grand piano. This, that's like the exact example I just gave. Really? Yeah. I, I watched. He's the, really good. He's really good at describing things. Yeah, you know, I watched the video. Yeah. It was from year or months ago when he said it though, so I feel like he's definitely learned a lot more since then. I like Anthony Fantano though. Yeah, he's cool. He's an instrument. He was in a band himself. Oh, was he, was he a really? Bass player in a band. Hmm. Yeah, my brother's like a big fan of him, so gotcha. He like knows these type of things. Honestly, I could be but. completely fucking wrong. Probably was a synth, and I was just trying to be an asshole because I do that a lot. Probably. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about this new song of yours with Moxus, and then let's wrap this shit up because my camera's overheating yeah. again. So great. May fourth, me and Moxus are dropping a song called Genie. Ah. Okay. Joey Natto, Genie, featuring the goat. The goat. Moxes. The goat Moxes. Not gonna, that hook just has been a, stuck in my head. Great nickname for Not me. even going to lie. Like, I'll walk around singing it. Oh, the hook. Great. Yeah. Yeah. No, this song is a banger. I really feel like it's a banger. It's produced by a producer. Ah, that makes sense. That I want. <laughs> <laughs> It's produced by a producer that I used to offer to carry his bags for him whenever he came to town. Wow. His name is Mike Squires. All right. He works with Chris Webby a lot on wow. like video stuff. But yeah, this is a true story. And when I told him that, he was like, bro, I'm just I'm just someone that likes making music, bro. <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> I was funny, like, yo, man. I'm telling you, like, I, I wanted to carry your bags for you, like, do whatever. Like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a figure of speech, but basically do whatever to help them. You know yeah. what I mean? Because... Yeah. You want to nice guy, Joey. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah, you were talking not about earlier to help them. Like uh, he could have helped me more than I could have helped him. But like, but yeah. But you want to get what I'm his saying. I, I get. I understand completely. You just offer any way to help him that you can. Just I to, wanted to be his bitch boy. Yeah. Uh, you, you've done. I've known you to do that a time or two with certain artists. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So the music video is crazy. It we is. shot it in a very desert location. Straight up looks it's, like you're in Egypt, dude. It, it was fucking dope. Maybe we were. Joey was in Egypt! <laughs> or whatever. I don't know what, what that, was. that I don't know what that was either. I don't know, but I'm probably going to edit that in there. Just okay. Because, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so people are going to think their like, phone's bugging out or like something. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, um, Moxus is clearly excited about this song. He posted an Instagram picture with oh. us from set. I don't think he does that usually. No. So that that was pretty dope. And 
I'm not putting out any snippets of the song, I don't think, until yeah, don't. the day the song comes out. I want it to be a surprise. Yeah, when you played me the song, I, I think I was really, really quiet the entire time. Was I you not? were, and that's why I thought you were like, wow, he really hates this song. <laughs> no, dude, but, I was like listening to everything that was going on with it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and the I, video, huh? Yeah. How about the video? The video huh? was dope, man. I got to see you without your hat on and a very oh, clear wow. image. Ah, yeah. 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 So that, that's that. If that's if there's no other reason to watch the video, there's a <laughs> you reason. You get to there. see Joey's head. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <laughs> How amazing! What what privilege do you guys are? <laughs> and then the uh, the effects. You noticed the effects with uh, with with the genie. Yeah. Yeah, that was nice. Was that yeah. Moxus as the genie, or was that you? I don't know. It's. Uh, I see. I, I, I just don't know. I, there was so much going on that I couldn't figure it out. I was listening and watching at the same time, <laughs> and I was so distracted by your head that I just kind of lost focus there for a little bit. So maybe it was during that transition scene that I just lost <laughs> like, focus. <laughs> I was like, fuck this genie. I just saw Joey's fucking head. <laughs> yeah, that's the real reveal. But, real reveal. Yeah, that comes out yeah. May 4th. Um, May 4th. Been holding on to the video for a long time. I think we shot it in either December or January. And uh, when it comes out, I'll give like more backstory about it on the podcast. But that's great, man. So yeah, I'm excited. Joey and Moxis. Uh, the song is called Genie. May fourth, and then May 9th is the YouTube Cipher Volume Three. And uh, yeah, we kind of talked about that. Yeah, we'll just like casually throw that in there. May 9th, YouTube Cipher Volume Three. It's gonna Let's be fucking go. dope. And I'm I'm excited for that. So yeah, that's gonna be the end of this podcast, guys. Joey, you got anything else to say? Duh! And until next time, guys, go ahead and pop a do. See you in the next podcast. Bye. Pop a do.